Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Follow Your Passion podcast. I'm your host, Erwin Wils. I'm a mindset business strategist and founder of Millionaire Life Strategy. In this podcast, I'm interviewing my clients and other entrepreneurs that are following their passion and make a good living out of it. When you want to know more about me or what I can do for you, check out my website, millionairelifestrategy.com. But first, check out this episode of Follow Your Passion. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Follow Your Passion. Let me introduce my guest of today. His name is Doug Lawrence. Doug is the founder of Talent C and co-founder of the International Mentor Community. After serving in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for 25 years, uh, Doug retired in 99 at the rank of Staff Sergeant. His service also left him with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. He has worked with researchers to examine the role of mentoring as a support to those struggling with PTSD. His experience in law enforcement, coupled with working with people suffering from PTSD, has afforded him a unique view uh, of mentoring and PTSD. Doc is a volunteer mentor uh, with the Sir Richard Branson Entrepreneur Program in the Caribbean and with the American Corporate Partners in the US. He's an international certified mentor international speaker and author uh, about all facets of mentoring. He leads organizations to experience the benefits, how mentoring will encourage workforce uh, culture to flow in harmony, improve productivity for employees and reducing costly employee onboarding, improving the bottom line. He published The Gift of Mentoring in 2014 and his second book, You Are Not Alone, this January 2022. Welcome, Doug. Glad to have you on the show. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. So would you say that uh, as you have been uh, diagnosed with PTSD when, once you retired from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, that your personal journey led you to uh, the importance of mentoring uh, so that you're now able to help others as well? Yeah, it, it definitely did. It definitely did. The, my experiences, <clears throat> my experiences that I have gone through, both from my own st- self, from a physical and a mental perspective, but also the things that my family had to deal with as well. Um, I, the time that I spent in the RCMP has certainly provided me with a lot of that background information. Yeah. Wow. And um, tell me a bit about the, the research you did with the, uh, about mentoring, its role with, the, with regards to PTSD. Well, what I was trying to do was to be able to determine, is there actually a place for mentoring in that space, in that mental health space? And it was very difficult to find any literature or, for that matter, anybody who had experienced in that field. And so I did quite a bit of research and and there was actually a research project underway here where I live that was actually examining different approaches Mm -hmm. to providing support to people that were dealing with mental health challenges or issues. And what I was able to find find was that in a couple different places and the exact location escapes me at this moment, but was the fact that they had actually created a role or a function within the organization for a mental health mentor. And I kind of picked up on that and started to, you know, ex- take a look and see with some of the situations I'd gone through, what would have, would anything have changed if I would have had that trained mentor that I could go to? And ultimately, obviously my answer was yes. You know, th- you know things, things would have been different And then I also looked at the people that I was mentoring who were dealing with mental health challenges. And, and, you know, once again, I was able to support the fact that had, you know, they earlier on been exposed to a mentor who had, you know, some training in the mental health space, that they would be a lot further along than what they are at this particular time point. Nice. And I, I can totally understand what you're saying because uh, people dealing with PTSD, you know, they're 
there's some sort of a caught in the visual circle. They don't see any positive outcome. And it helps if they have somebody they can turn to that has been there, uh, got through it, and can show them there's actually light at the end of the tunnel, right? Yeah, that's right. And and the other thing for us to think about, certainly for for our listeners, is that you know it, it's there's a, there's the stigmatism around that you know around mental health that you know obviously the person's a little crazy and stuff like that, and that's not the case. But most of us can provide some sort of we'll call it service for lack of a better choice of words, but can provide some support even though we may not be trained in that particular area. Cause you know, there's, there are a couple things that, that everybody I have spoken to has said, you know, we don't need to be diagnosed. We don't need any of that stuff. We just want somebody to listen and hear what it is that, you know, our story. And we want somebody to, to be able to do that and be non-judgmental. So, you know, not going and sort of have preconceived bias not having, you know, the, oh, here we go again, sort of idea, right, is yeah. is to go into it open-minded, but with the idea in mind of I'm going to listen and hear, I'm not going to pass judgment, nor am I going to say, well, if, I, if th- this was me, I would do this. You stay away from that, and your primary responsibility is to listen and hear. Yeah, and it, that's, it, it's right what you said, you know, there's a lot of stigmatism around PTSD and, and people suffering from health, mental health issues. But that, I guess during the lockdown, it became more, more open to talk about these things because a lot of people experience things they've never experienced before, you know, by uh, avoiding contact. And they start recognizing that, there's so much more to mental health than, than people can imagine. Most definitely. And you know, the, the lockdown, the whole COVID thing was extremely difficult for a lot of people who were that sort of individual that has to have relationships that has to have interaction with others. I know I went through withdrawals horribly much uh, because I I love to get out and I like to socialize with people and of course with what I do for for my work with mentoring is it, it was very difficult to make that shift that shift to going to the virtual space versus you know in person and and even today it's still very difficult to be able to send someone a message and say meet me for coffee because people are still hesitant to do so. Yeah, yeah, I can uh, I can totally uh, uh, imagine that. So, uh, tell me about your first book, "The Gift of Mentoring." What what was your intention with with the book? the The book it, it was so both books actually were written from a little push or a friendly nudge from some of my mentors who said, you know, so with the first book, "The Gift of Mentoring," they said, you know, you've written all these blog articles. Why don't you take and bring them all together into a book and publish a book? And I went, I don't know about that. I've never written a book before. And they said, no, you you need to do this. So I I went ahead and in uh, 2014, we published The Gift of Mentoring. And and the idea behind it was that it's kind of like mentoring 101. It gives you sort of the 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 basics, the uh, the processes, the concepts, there's some case studies in there that you can kind of go through and, and take a look and see, okay, if this was me, this is how I would respond and so on and so forth. And a lot of people, the probably the best feedback I had from that book, which made it a little bit more easier to make the decision to write the second one was that with the gift of mentoring, people said that it was like I was sitting right beside you on a park bench and you were reading the story because your voice, as I'm reading this story, your voice, I can just hear your voice coming out through the pages. And so it was, you know, quite a, that was quite a uh, acknowledgement of, of how the book was written. And then when we fast forward to you are not alone, that one was the same sort of concept was the idea came from, uh, some of my mentors, some of my colleagues who said, 
okay, Doug, you're mentoring people with post-traumatic stress. You're dealing with people who have got anxiety, depression, and all those things. Why aren't you writing a book about this? And I went, okay. <laughs> and, and so I did. I wrote the, the book, You Are Not Alone, which is primarily focused on the idea of how can mentoring be part of the support structure for mental health. And we published it in uh, 2022. So this year in January, actually, um, it was published and it became a uh, number one bestseller on Amazon. So yeah, I was quite, uh, hadn't planned on that, but I'm, I was quite uh, honored that it, it received that recognition. Yeah, I yeah yeah, and it's it, it's great, you know. And I also think that that you're not alone. Even the title, you know, it says that people with mental health uh, challenges, you know, they can um, associate with the title. You know, they're but most people think they're alone. You know, that they're the only one that that have this issue. Um, they might feel ashamed or guilt, you know, but that they have to deal with it. And I guess this this book opens up the conversation about it, and that's that's the beauty of it. So I think a lot of people will associate with it, uh, especially with the title. It will attract them. Yes, most definitely. And you know what's interesting is that I hear that phrase, "You are not alone." I hear that quite often now, and maybe it's just because I'm in tune with who who who's talking about the book now. But you know, it, it can be some some folks will even be saying, you know please just reach out to me if you ever need any help because you, you need to know you're not alone. And I'm going just a minute now, that's my line. What do you, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's at least you got this title for your book, because if you would have called it me too, then you would have fought other issues. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it, it, it always amazes me what, what kind of ripple effect a book can have. You know, uh, if you're doing a lot of one-on-one coaching, you see the direct results. But publishing a book, you know, it can help so many people uh, without you even realizing it. So was that also a driver for you to, to publish the book? Yes, it was. The, the idea was to, number one, to heighten the awareness of mentoring by itself. And then, and then to heighten the awareness and get people starting to think that, just a minute now, mentoring can be part of the support structure for, for mental health. I know I'm, I'm doing some work with a couple different organizations that are actually looking at creating a different um, uh, health model where they deal with people who are struggling with mental health challenges, who may be suicidal and all of that. And they too have now recognized as a result of the book and, and a number of other things that there are, there is a place for mentoring to, to play in the mental health space. And, you know, the, the book has helped us move further along that path where people, when they read the book and they come back and they, I actually had somebody here two days ago sent me a message and said, I'd like to get together for a coffee and stuff like that with you. And by the way, I've been reading your book and you need to get this book out to more people. And how can, how can we go, how can we go about getting the story, the message about mentoring and mental health? How can we go about getting that out there? Because that is part of the solution. Yeah. Nice. And um, so in your own words, you know, there are a lot of definitions of mentoring, coaching, uh, training. So in in your own uh, words, what's the difference between a mentor and a coach? There's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we need to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, For me, the difference between a mentor and a coach is typically my experiences have been with coaches is that they're brought into an organization to work with a particular employee who is having performance issues or challenges. And they, you know, they, they basically, as I call it, they drive the bus, they determine what the agenda is going to be and, and what are the tasks that the, 
the uh, the coachee needs to do in order to move forward and, and and get back on track again from a performance perspective. With a mentor, we we would come at it from the aspect of of it being a longer term relationship. So, for example, I have people that I'm mentoring today that we've had a, a mentoring relationship for five or six years now, and um, I don't see that in the coaching space where it's that it's, you know, it, it's more, more defined. Um, and, and then I guess the other part is I find that um, with, especially with the work that I'm doing in the mental health space, I see mm-hmm. that more and more often that that is more of a, what a mentor would be involved in just because of the interpersonal and stuff like that versus what the coach would be. And there's, oh my gosh, there's so much literature out there on what is a coach and what's a mentor. And, and at the end of the day, you know, the definition, I guess, is one thing, but at the end of the day, the, the ultimate goal here is to provide healing of some sort, whether it be coaching or mentoring to somebody who is in need. And whether you do that through coaching or whether you do that through mentoring, as long as we don't leave them on the island by themselves. I think that's the that's the answer. Uh, that's a wonderful answer, Doc, indeed. And um, if I look at it from my perspective, I always say that um, a mentor is somebody that has uh, been through the situation, and a coach doesn't need to uh, to have uh, the same experience. You know, if you look at soccer, for instance, you know, uh, Lionel Messi is one of the world's greatest soccer players, uh, Ronaldo as well. And uh, they could be uh, a great mentor for other uh, soccer players, right? As if a coach who, who drives the team, he doesn't need to have been a great soccer player, but he can get the best out of other people. And uh, I think that that with your experience, you know, with, with, um, uh, you're a great mentor for people that are suffering from melt, uh, mental health issues. Um, so you're also um, supporting organizations, you know, to 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 uh, integrate mentoring in their uh, in their culture in their programs. Is it also uh, because most mentoring, if people come to you, they they have issues, you know? But would you say that mentoring also helps uh, preventing uh, mental health issues if done uh, the right way? Oh, definitely, without a without a doubt, it it you you can come at it from a reactive or a proactive perspective, right? And <clears throat> and organizations can actually set up a program, a mentoring program with a mental health flavor to it that will help their organization be able to move forward. But what it's also going to do is it's going to provide that place where employees can go to get the guidance that they need to have somebody who can support them through some of the things they're dealing with. I it just, it, I actually had an organization where I was uh, meeting with one of the employees and I was, I was just telling a bit of the story of mentoring and mental health. And they go, you know, we've actually, we have a couple of employees that would really benefit from, from your, your service. And Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, you know, who do I talk to? And they said, well, just let me uh, go back and see what I can, what I can figure out. So they, they go back to their office and we set up another two weeks down the road, another coffee meeting. And they, I go, so where are we going now? And they said, probably nowhere. Cause they didn't really want to engage anybody to come in. They figured, you know, things aren't too bad right now. So if they get worse, then we'll have to deal with it then. And I'm thinking like, you know, how, how can you, how can you treat an employee like that? Number one is, you mm-hmm. know, well, we'll let you continue on and, you know, having your times where you, you need to vent or that you, you know, you all of a sudden you just explode and you, you need somebody to talk to. And 
So we're okay with letting that go unsupported. And I'm thinking, not the place I want to be. <laughs> no, I can't. Yeah, it's like, you know, we'll just wait until it's too late and then we'll call you again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and people people have a tendency to not understand or choose not to understand that mental health can be a progressive journey. And the end of the journey is a very traumatic experience where somebody may take their own life, right? And if that happens, we've all failed. And, yeah. right, it, it's, and so people need to understand that if we're proactive, we can probably save some of those situations from actually happening. If we're reactive, there, you know, it, unless we do something to change that, it's probably not, uh, it's not going to end well. Yeah, and that I have to agree to that. You know, it's um, if if you're always uh, reactive, you know, you're chasing after the facts, and that that's never a good good way of doing business or doing anything, actually. So, uh, tell me a bit about your your volunteer uh, work as well, because you're not only uh, doing this as a paid job, but you're actually also a volunteer uh, mentor with the Sir Richard Branson uh, project and the other one with the uh, where you're helping uh, I think uh, former soldiers that are dealing with PTSD so tell tell me a bit about that uh, doc yeah so the the Sir Richard Branson entrepreneur program in the Caribbean is mm -hmm. what he's gone and done uh, is he's set up a uh, a support structure for entrepreneurs in, in that geographical area. So he's, he set up a, a support structure. So they, they end up assigning uh, mentors to work with these young entrepreneurs to help them get their business off the ground and, and contribute back to, you know, back to the, uh, the geographical area that they're from. So yeah. I, I've, I've been mentoring now for gosh, three, four years with their program. I've worked with some extremely brilliant young entrepreneurs. I worked with a, a couple of guys that had started a restaurant in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with uh, and still am working with a young lady that has her own uh, IT information technology consulting business. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I'm right now I'm working with a young lady that, um, is in the communication and public speaking business. And so we're, we're working together to take her business to uh, a new level. So, nice. so it, it's been, it's been, you know, it's a lot of virtual uh, work. So I'm still trying to figure out how I can get to, to Jamaica, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll sort that out later, I guess. But, and then with American corporate partners in the United States, I've been, uh, I've probably had three or four people now that I have been working with. And the idea behind their program is to help. They provide mentors to service personnel that are transitioning from service life to civilian life. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of what a lot of people don't understand is that when they're going through that transitioning process, they're also bringing with them some things, some trauma that they have had to deal with as a, you know, as a service person. So, you know, there can be, they may have been frontline battle people where, you know, there's shells flying all over the place. And, um, you know, even more, we could get a lot more graphic than, than that, but, you know, they've had to deal with some of that stuff, even an example of, of, some of the triggers that they're working with is that, um, you know, they, they would be so accustomed to guns firing right beside them and bombs going off and all that sort of stuff. And they would be in civilian life. They'd go to a um, state fair or something where they released firecrackers yeah. and that would, that would trigger, that would trigger a memory for them of being back in, back in combat. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's a, it's a matter of how 
how do we go through and deal with that? What are some of the coping skills we can give them to be able to help them deal with that? Yeah. That, right. So. And uh, the, the reason I asked for, for your, your volunteering uh, mentorship is that it shows that it's really something you're passionate about, right? You're not doing it for the money. You're doing it because you love to mentor people, help them with the mental uh, health issues. And luckily you're getting paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, my favorite line is I will never leave you on the Island by yourself. And I, I mean that if it came down to having to do something pro bono because somebody didn't have the money, then we would just do it and get it done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great attitude, uh, Doc. Um, so could you mention one of your uh, success stories from a, from a, a client you helped? that made a real impact in their lives? I actually had a uh, young person who got referred to me by another mentor and they were, they were unable to uh, be able to get anywhere. And what was happening was the, the young person was becoming discouraged because they kept sending out resumes and they were getting no responses and everything else. And so they asked if I would meet to see if there was something I could do. And so I arranged to meet this person at a coffee shop and right on, right. As soon as she walked in the door, I could tell right away that here was somebody who didn't believe in themselves, who had low self-esteem, lack of confidence, self-doubt, self-worth, all of the, the selves as I call them, she she just she didn't believe in herself and so i started us off by simply saying you know help me understand why you don't believe in yourself as much as i believe in you and we progressively went from there and started going and i i basically did is what i call a makeover of that individual where i got her to believe who she was she did positive affirmations on post-it notes and stuck them on the, the bathroom mirror and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So she was getting herself into a state of positivity every morning. And what, to make a long story short, what ended up happening was got her to change her resume make it more positive, got her to believe in what she was writing. She started to apply on jobs and within a week she had three job opportunities on her lap. And since then she has You know, she got hired, she worked for here in the city for a bit and then got offered a job at head office in Toronto, Ontario, and has gone on to have a, a great career. And it was all because we took the time to look inside to see what was actually inside that person. And there was so much good that once we figured out how to get it outside, then she started to grow as a person. Nice, nice, and wonderful result as well, uh, Doc. Something you can be proud of, indeed. Uh, it it reminds me of one of uh, what one of my coaches said that um, if you would consider yourself as a box, you never know what's uh, what's on the label. So you need somebody outside of the box to read the label and see what's inside of it. Yeah, and that's uh, that's exactly what you did. You know, you looked at at the the golden nuggets that were inside of her, and uh, you made her realize that it's actually a part of her, and and she grew into that, and that's that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, you said that you're building a long lasting relationships with your clients because of the mentoring, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, Do you still keep in touch uh, with with your um, former clients, even when the mentoring is over? Yeah, I do. I Even after we've actually... <clears throat> One thing that I always tell people is if you get into a mentoring relationship with me, it's, it's a relationship for life. And that's, you know, so that can mean, as I usually will do sometimes I'll, I tell people, so mentoring can be a long-term relationship. In fact, I said, I'll bump into somebody I've been mentoring in the grocery store and I'll just ask them, you know, how are you doing? And 
do we need to get together? No, you're fine. Okay, great. You know, so we'll see you again next time, so to speak, you know, but yeah. um, it, it, for, for me, it's really, it's important to keep those relationships going because I don't want the perception to be that, you know, you, you go see Doug and Doug helps you and then that's it. He disappears. And he, you know, it, yeah. it's almost, it's almost as though you care at that time point, but you don't care beyond that. And that's not how, how I work. Yeah. I, I totally get that. You know, it's, um, it's actually when you're mentoring or even also with coaching, you know, especially one-to-one you're actually building, uh, you, you, I would almost say you get very intimate because if you truly want to help a person, that person needs to open up. And w- when I started uh, with hypnotherapy uh, seven years ago, uh, my mentor also said, you know, uh, you have to, uh, if you want people to change or you have to set the example. So you have to open up yourself as well. So you get to know each other very, uh, very good. So it would be, uh, almost unhuman to uh, to let them go and not see them anymore. Because yeah. you, especially when you when you have been together and worked together through uh, through some uh, tough times, uh, you just become some sort of friends, and that's uh, something you should uh, cherish actually. Yeah, and the the thing that I have found is that I have to be <laughs> I have to be willing to share something personal about myself with my, with the person that I'm mentoring, because that helps us create that pathway that for that journey to, because I become, I become vulnerable. And by doing that, I let them know that, you know, it's okay to, to be vulnerable and that's how we're going to be able to move forward. And, yeah. and, it, and it works great. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's actually what I, what I meant indeed, you know, you set the example, uh, you, you, you create a safe environment where you show that it's okay to be vulnerable and to talk about the things that bother you and, and challenge you, you know, and, um, well, c- coming to your book again, you're showing them they're not alone, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Beautiful. So is there any inspiration to, to start a third book of some, some sort? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I was afraid so. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I actually went away for a week, probably two, three weeks ago. I went away to um a location. It, it it had some ties to it. It was it was the first place that my so I've lost my wife to cancer back in mm. uh 2021. And this, this was actually our first posting as a husband and wife team uh, in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So, so I went back to this location and it was, it, it helped me with the creativity that I was looking to get started, but I, I did get a chance to get started writing again. And I got about 20 or 30 pages of content started um, on the next book, the, the next book is going to be called the silent pandemic. And it's going to speak to a large part of the, at least at the beginning of the book is going to talk about mentoring and grief and how mentoring can be part of the support for people that are grieving and going through that process. And then we'll get into more of the, the men, mental health, even though grief is part of mental health as, as well. So I want to be able to expand on what we talked about in You Are Not Alone and expand. So, yeah, it's uh, The Silent Pandemic is the title. And I'm hoping to be uh, published, to have the book published in February of next year. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, uh, very sad to hear that you you lost your wife uh, last year due to cancer. It's It's a... Uh, very bad disease, you know, and with that respect, you're not alone as well on that case. So, mm-hmm. but as long as you have great memories of her, you know, she, she's still alive in some sort. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So 
being a me- are you are you yourself still being mentored by somebody? Yeah, I still I still have people that I consider to be my mentor, most definitely. Yeah, I, everybody needs to have one or two mentors for sure. And I, I've I've I'm blessed. I've got some really great people that are there to guide me. And when it came to the book, you are not alone. They were also there to kick my butt to tell me to get <laughs> to get going. So yeah, uh, it's yeah. Yeah, it's it's great to have such uh let's call them accountability partners, right? Yeah, yeah. It's when you're going to the gym uh, on your own. Uh you might do that for a month until something happens. And before you know it, you're only paying the subscription. Yeah. But having a second uh, second partner there, uh it definitely helps to to keep you motivated and to persevere and go on. So yeah. 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 You, you need to have those accountability partners because that's what I know. That's what keeps me going is if it had not been for Catherine kicking my butt, I don't think I'd have, uh, the, I would have had a half finished book sitting on the, on the bookshelf. So, yeah. and, and you know, and what's also interesting is that, that, that little push is now it's baited me. It's got me going where now I look forward to sitting down and writing and I'm already thinking of what's the next book after, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's like a positive disease, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. And I think with your experience, uh, Doc and Wisdom, you got a lot more to share with, uh, with the world. So. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Doc, I think we can we can talk for hours on the subject of mentoring and mental health, you know, and it, it's wonderful that we're that we're able to use our skills and talents to to make a difference in in people's lives. You know, it's it's so satisfying to see the results when you, when your clients transform or make this positive shift that you were looking for. Um, if you could share a little tip or a little piece of wisdom with the audience, uh, what would that be, Doc? You know, the the most important piece of wisdom I can give is that it's okay to reach out and ask for help. It's okay to say, I need help. And that all of us need to, when somebody comes to you and says, I'm having a bad day and I could sure use help, don't walk away. Extend your hand and say, I am here to help. You are not alone. Wonderful advice. I hope people will uh, take it up them uh, on them. So if people want to know more about you, Doc, or uh, get in touch with you, how can you do that? So they can they can go to my website, www.talentc, so the word talent, letter C on the end, dot C-A. They can reach out to me on LinkedIn. So just search on Doug Lawrence and you'll find me and, and you can message me through that uh, if you so wish. Um, and there's some good stuff that's, you know, in my LinkedIn profile as well that give you an idea whether you want to reach out to me or not. So, and then finally, I have no problems whatsoever if people want to send me an email and we can, you know, get a dialogue started And my email address. You can get it through the website, but I'll give it to you here now is doug.lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E, at Talent C, so the word talent, letter C on the end, dot C-A. Nice. And of course, I guess you're all over Amazon with your books, uh, Doug, as well. Yes, I am. Amazon.com has uh, carries both. Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, I want to thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge and wisdom. Uh, I had a wonderful conversation. I hope you liked it too. And uh, let's keep in touch, Doug. Yes, let's do that. I hope you liked this episode. Make sure to check out the other episodes because each one is filled with interesting and inspiring stories and energy. Are you following your passion as well and make a good living out of it? Contact me and you could be my next guest. Would you like to follow your passion but are not there yet? Check out my website millionairelifestrategy.com and book an appointment to discover what I could do for you. Don't forget to share the podcast with your friends so that they get inspired as well. 